Good morning, good morning. Happy Monday, and I've got to be totally entertained this morning because the yard guys are right next door. So we're gonna see how this all works. I was like, are they gonna get it done in the next two minutes? So good morning to all of you. My name is Bonnie Sachs, and this is my happy half hour. I am the award-winning author of the Health and Happiness Guide to the Universal Laws, and I'm starting to feel like I need to stop cashing in on that, um, that label because it's time to write another book, but I haven't gotten there yet. So we'll just see how all of that shows up. Um, this morning, I find it really interesting because there's so many things going on. Um, as I was sitting here, kind of meditating and being in the space of what am I going to be talking about today. Um, there were some downloads of information and some healing that was going on and I was just doing a whole like, <gasps> my body was starting to flip out. And, um, and that's always interesting, right? You're just about to go and get on and, and um, talk to people and your body is busy flipping out. So, I asked the question, what in the world is going on? And um, and I can also ask that question that I have a lot of people who are viewing this and I am not seeing anything from anybody. I'm seeing me, but I'm not seeing anything from anybody. So good morning to all of you. Um, until that pops up, we're just gonna like let, let that be. But I asked the question like, is there a reason why I'm getting this download and having this experience at this moment? And the answer was absolutely yes, of course there is. And that is so that I can share that with all of you. And um, and so I'm, I'm going to do that. You know, as I was sitting here, I could feel that I was starting to have some anxiety. That's how I would describe it some um, anxiety of like, oh my gosh, what in the world is going on? And um, what happened to me was I, I was walking towards the table and I felt like I ran into something. Like I just physically had a, a stop, like a block that I ran into. And I wasn't sure what that was. I couldn't figure that out. I luckily have several people that I can text. And so I text um, my my good friend and was like, I'm having trouble. Can you take a look at this? And so she was able to see that I had actually hit um, a control cap. And the control cap is um, basically something that is put in um, to our bodies to keep us from going up in frequency. And um, I sort of see it like the lid to a jar that, you know, the when you put the uh, um, lightning bugs into the jar and that they keep hitting the lid that that's kind of my analogy for it what a control cap is is like a lid that keeps you from going up and so I was able to have that moved right that's the reason why we are not here doing this alone we are in a community of people that we can turn to and ask questions of and get assistance from and so that's really cool. Like all of a sudden, oh my gosh, everything just popped up on my screen. <laughs> I love that because I was just talking about having a community, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it's so amazing. So good morning, I'm Robin and David and Jill and, and Aaron. It's so cool to have um, all of you here and to be able to say that we are here in a community and then literally... That all just popped up on my screen. Everybody's saying good morning. So good morning to all of you. It is great to see you. We are absolutely here in a community to be able to help each other out, to be able to support each other and to say, I know how you're feeling. I understand that. I felt the same way. Let me explain it to you. Um, you know, it is a really cool aspect of what we are here doing. And this morning, most of you know that I go and I walk. I haven't actually walked in probably a week and a half, but this morning, it's July 1st, we're starting all over again. So I got my butt up out of bed and I went walking. And I started listening to the um, introduction 
to Paul Selig's um, book, his most recent book that is out. He has another one coming out in, in August, but um, his most recent book, Book of Freedom. And I was listening to that book. Um, good morning, Millie. You're always telling me on Wednesdays that you, um, you don't remember or you can't get on in the morning. So good morning, good morning. It is great to see you. There's a couple extra good mornings because um, you don't always get on. So I was listening to the recording today um, for the introduction for the book. And I have been asking this question, like, um, how is it that we come into bodies and we come into this place that's so low frequency? And how do we manage all of the aspects of what we are doing here on the planet? And it was so cool because I was getting so much information about the agreements that we have, right? That we as souls um, agree to come here on the planet. And when we come into uh, bodies, we come into all these agreements that we are going to be here and we are going to forget who we are. We're going to forget that we're souls having um, an incarnation, that this is not the truth of us, right? How we're showing up here is not the truth of us. And we forget all of the agreements that we have made when we um, come out into a body, right? We come out, we're born, and it's like we are, I often use this analogy, handed the book that says, uh, here's how you're going to play this game. It's all the rules for everything that we're doing. And good morning, Alyssa, and good morning, Hadar. It's great to see you. Um, we have these, this long list of agreements that we've made that we agree to um, play in this, in this um, field, right, in this, on this planet with these rules. And I love the one they gave me this morning, um, the collective agreement that we have as an example, where we all agree that we're all, you know, running on the same time schedule. So around the world everybody is so many hours ahead of us or behind us and but we all agree that this is the time you know it is 907 roundabouts um here where i am and then it's 1007 and 1107 around the world and we make these big agreements and that's you know kind of how we do everything we make these agreements that this is the structure of our government, that this is how we play each game that we participate in. And here's what my relationship is going to be like with my mother and with my sister and with my, um, you know, cousins and, and co-workers and neighbors. And here's how the relationships are going to work. And we show up in those agreements and behave the way we have learned to behave, whatever our agreement is. You know, if we grew up in one country, we have a certain idea of what relationships look like. And then if we grow up in another country, we have a different idea of what relationships are like. And what's really cool is what I just saw is this weaving together of this conversation that we are all here together supporting each other. So. All of us, each one of us is like our own little pod, right? Our own little capsule of how we were born and how we were raised and what our stories are and our agreements with our family members. I see some of us have agreed to be, um, have great relationships with our parents and others of us have agreed to really um, show up as the, as, as the reverse, right? The person who shows up is, they feel like they are their parents' parent, right? And there's all these different agreements that we have showed up in, and each one of us is showing up together in this community, right? This community at the moment that's called bonniesacks.com, where we've all agreed to show up here and, and bring our own little pods, bring our own... Um, stories and perspectives here, but we're going to come together in this place and we're going to support each other and we're going to be there, whatever you need, you know, you know that you can 
um, text me or you can have a conversation with me on Facebook and I'm going to show up for you. I'm going to be there to help you understand what is going on and to give you some perspective and to explain what that that feeling of anxiety is of whatever you happen to be going through. Um, good morning, Laura and Jackie and um, everyone else. I was um, telling all of you when I first came on, I had no information that was showing up. And then as soon as I started talking about community, it literally all of that information popped in um, on the screen. So good morning to all of you. But we all have agreed to show up here being part of this community, whatever that looks like. And it, um, the analogy that I'm being given is that it doesn't matter where we are, right? It's really important because I know Hadar is in Philadelphia, so it doesn't matter that she's in Philadelphia and I'm here in Florida. And um, Robin, of course, is just on the other side of the community here. That doesn't matter because we all work on the basis of energy. It doesn't matter how far away we are or how close we are. We're all here in this conversation together and here supporting each other with whatever is going on in your life. So I absolutely love that, um, that I was given that perspective and it's that knowing that we all have this agreement to show up. You know, um, it, it's Jackie, I love that um, you are here because I'm just being shown um, today, this weekend when I was out to dinner with a bunch of friends, two people were sitting next to each other and they didn't know each other um, prior. They hadn't met each other prior to um, us getting together for dinner. But when they sat down next to each other, they realized that the two of them are both in a class that I am, I am co-teaching with my dear friend, um, Kat. And it was just the cutest thing for them to be like, oh my God, we're classmates. Like here we are living our own lives and we come together and we realize that we do have a lot in common, that we do have a lot of experiences that we are going through together. And of course we do. And that is completely by agreement. It's what we agreed to do. So we all made these agreements. I asked this morning, how many agreements have I made? How many agreements? Like, I really would love to have a number. And the very first thing I heard was millions of agreements. And that one flipped me out to be honest with you. I was like, oh, millions of agreements, oh my gosh. And it felt like completely overwhelming that there was no way I could possibly make that many agreements and satisfy that many agreements. But then what they did is they backed the number down to um, hundreds of thousands, which sort of made me laugh because that still seems like an extraordinary number. But if you're like me, you know, you can start to see where all of those agreements, I mean, how many agreements have you made with your mom, with your mother, whoever that is, right? Not just the big agreement for you to be the, the um, child of, but also all those little agreements that you made where you were going to show up to be in support of and that you were going to be a teacher for your um, mom, that you were going to have all those different experiences. So if we look at just one person and how many agreements we made with one person, with one soul, it starts to become a little bit more, okay, a little bit more manageable, right? A little bit more of, okay, I can do this, I can understand this, and I can see how you can get to millions of agreements that we have just by counting those things, right? So we all have these agreements. Now, there is this agreement for all of us. Anybody who shows up on um, watching my videos is someone who has had an agreement to be a vacuum cleaner, right? To be somebody who is what I would use the term portal, 
who was agreeing to take the low frequencies off the planet to be a portal, to be someone who's like, I'm going to be here and I'm going to um, agree to take, move low frequencies, fear, pain, anger, unworthiness, shame, blame, guilt, all of those things. We all have a big batch of those things that we have agreed to take off the planet. And it's kind of our share of work that we're doing. Good morning, Laura. It's great to see you. Uh, so it is our share. The way it's showing up to me, I love this. Um, I haven't seen this movie in such a long time. They're showing me um, Ghostbusters and those big containers that, um, that they had you know, that almost looks like the containers that we use for vacuum cleaners now. And it is the those containers that we have been going around and sucking up these low frequencies um, to take them off the planet. So there aren't nearly the volume of them. And I've been asking this question. Um, hey, Scott, it's great to see you as well. Um, I've been asking this question about um, how we're taking these frequencies off the planet. And I love that um, I'm given the analogy of the vacuum cleaner. And we suck them all up and then we're able to transmute them, right? We're able to use a higher frequency, use um, love or joy or bliss or gratitude, radiance, so many beautiful frequencies to transmute what is in our bodies. But we can't possibly imagine the volume of low frequencies, low frequencies that we have taken on. And show me the example this morning when I woke up, I had loads of pictures of my mom as an alien. It was just, um, I, Every time I got rid of one picture of my mom um, as an alien, like with no hair and with, you know, um, dozens of arms and things like that, another picture would take its place. And my mom is not an alien. My mom is a human, just like everybody else um, here on the planet. But they're showing me how many different forms that there are and just it was amazing, just one picture after another. And every time I kept moving a picture, because it was a little disturbing to me, right? Every time I kept moving um, one picture, another picture would show up. And, and um, you know, just in her hair, being bald, being filled with snakes, being um, filled with claws and having like almost like a hands coming out of her, just one thing after another, right? That's just bizarre, right? Just completely freaky. But it's the an example of the low frequencies that are there. And we could put a name to each one of those low frequencies and know that that's like, oh, let's move another one of those out. Let's move the pain and the fear and the anger and the unworthiness out. And then eventually I got to the point where I could see a little bit more of the truth of her. And that actually is a great analogy for what we are doing here for ourselves, right? We are um, filled with these exact same low frequencies. And if we could see psychically, for those of you who can see psychically, if you can see the energy, you would just see the, the snakes, the spiders, the um, scorpions, the all different kinds of beings that are all over our bodies, that our, our bodies are filled with, our bodies are filled with. And those low frequencies is, are, frequencies are what we are moving out, right? Those things are um, not the truth of us. They're not who we really are. When you look at us, energetically and you move all of that stuff out of the way, the pain, the fear, the anger, the anguish, we move all those things out of the way. Well, we are beautiful pink, rose pink quartz crystals. And then you throw all that stuff on top of it. And it is really hard to find anything that resembles pink quartz or crystal 
in that space. So we have, we are moving those things out. The volume of what we're moving out is incredible. It's hard to imagine, once again, I ask the question, like, show me how much there is. And it is uh, the equivalent of having um, a person being in the middle of a state filled with garbage. It's just, if you could put one person in the state of Texas and then fill the rest of the state up um, as tall as the person is with garbage and hucha, you know, those low frequencies, you would have an idea of how much there is in each one of us, right? That's one person, how much one person has. And it's that volume, imagine if we were able to take, you know, a scoop of it up and get rid of it every hour. How long would it take for us to get to the person? How long would it take for us to move enough of those low frequencies out to get a sense of how much stuff there is in us? Holy cow, you know. I remember when I was studying um, how the, the trash that was floating in the Pacific Ocean, how big that trash heap was. And when I first looked at it a dozen years ago, maybe, it was about the size of um, the state of Rhode Island. And then it seemed like every time I um, looked for the information again, the size of the trash heap got bigger. And the last time I remember looking, and it's probably been a few years, it was about the size of Texas. So the idea of how much, how much trash we have in our bodies, keeping in mind that we're talking about energy, you know, the volume that could fit on, on my pinky finger is stunning. But we're talking about volumes and volumes and volumes of trash. And so we are just constantly moving that out, constantly reminding ourselves that somewhere in this heap is the rose pink quartz. Somewhere in this heap is the soul that is here to do this amazing work. Somewhere in this heap is the person who agreed to show up and help clean the planet, help move more of these low frequencies. And that, you know, brings me back around again to the idea that we are all here together. Because sometimes I have a hard time not remembering that, am I going to say this backwards? Not remembering that not ah, that whole thing of trying to keep kind of trying to keep things going right I have, sometimes I have trouble remembering how about that that I'm in there that I am somewhere in that heap of stuff but I keep people around me who remind me I know who you are I know where you are and I know what you're here doing and when we keep those people around us, when we keep in touch with people who are going to say, no, no, I can see you, really. <laughs> it's like the person who can dig through the pile and go, I can see your eye. I can see your finger. I can see who you are, even if you have no idea, even if you can't remember. That's the reason why we keep each other around. So we have somebody to remind us that despite all the trash that is covering us, that we really are here making a difference, that it is the truth of us deep down. It's not what everybody is seeing on the outside. And I love that I was given this information today, but I was also given it earlier in the weekend, uh, my husband and I were shopping and we were out. Um, actually, I can do an ad for Pier 1. We were at Pier 1 and I saw this really cool picture of birds sitting on a wire. And um, my husband turned around to me and he said, 
um, that kind of looks like you and your you and your peeps. And um, and I thought that was really funny because I was like, yeah, that is. It's all of us sitting on a wire, kind of sitting around chirping and chatting about what is going on and what exactly is happening. And and some of them are paired together and some of them are in threes. One of them is sitting by themselves, but they're all there, you know, supporting each other and chirping and having this conversation about what is going on. And so I posted that because it was so important for us to remember that we do want to show up for each other. We do want to hang out together. And it doesn't have to be in the physical. I had some people talk about dreams that they had last night, that there were a bunch of us that were hanging out together on the astral. And then a couple nights ago, there was another one of those. So even if you don't live in the same city, even if you don't live in the same area, you can still hang out. There are still ways to show up. There are still ways for you to remember, oh my gosh, don't forget, there are people here who know who I am. There are people here who are going to support me. There are people who I can always reach out to and they're going to say, oh no, that's not you. <laughs> Let me move that picture you have of you showing up as a pile of trash. Let me move that cap that says that you can only go this high. You can't go above that piece. We have lots of people in our community that constantly remind us that we are so much bigger, so much more powerful, so much more than what we think we are. Sometimes it's really easy to look in the mirror and see nothing but that pile of trash, right? We look in the mirror and all we see is that pile of trash. And so we need to have that person who says, oh, that's not who you are. I can see you under there. So I want to encourage all of you this week to take some time to see where your peeps are. And of course, you've got lots of peeps here on um, my Facebook page and through connections that you all have with me, you have lots of people who are here supporting you. And, you know, remember that, that when it gets tough, when you're not sure where you're going, when you're not sure what's happening next, when you feel like you've got so much anxiety sitting in your chest that you just can't see the truth of anything that you can pick up the phone and you can text somebody, that you can get on Facebook and you can send me a Facebook message, that there are people that you can reach out to who are there to support you, to love you, to remind you of who you are. I love that we are not here doing it alone. It's one of the great aspects that Source came up with. All right, we're going to send all of you down there and we're going to put you in a pile of shit but we are going to make sure that somewhere in that pile, you're going to be able to grab hands with some other people and, and pull each other out of the pile and to remind each other that that is not the truth of you. It's a really beautiful message, and it's a great thing to remind us um, all the time that this is not the truth of us. I want to wish all of you a really fun and safe July 4th. Um, do not go into any fear around what is happening in the world. Once again, we've got each other. We have each other. We're holding hands. We're there for each other. It is going to be an amazing week, and I'm very excited about having all of you here this morning. Hope you have a great, great week, and we'll see you here next week. Take care.